Oh God. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. This sucks. I recently made a short film called Bombs Away that you can watch right now, right here on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out now. The video you're watching now is one in a series of videos about how this project came together from start to finish. Today, we're talking about editing. <laughs> I did all of my editing in DaVinci Resolve. These days, basically all of my work is done in Resolve, but I do crack open Premiere from time to time for specific jobs. And this was a big decision. I knew that editing in Resolve would give me a lot of advantages, but it would also force me to do some things in new ways. Obviously the big selling point of editing in Resolve is the extremely powerful color page. I knew for sure I was gonna color this in Resolve eventually, so that helped me make my decision. At this point, I'm very familiar with Resolve's edit page and Fairlight page for audio, so I knew that editing and sound wouldn't be too much of a technical struggle for this project either. But the biggest stretch for me was going to be cracking into Fusion for all the effects work. I knew that this was going to be the biggest hurdle going in, but it's always been something I wanted to figure out. I knew that if worse came to worse, I could fire up After Effects and knock out a shot there if I had to, but I was determined to use Resolve for as much of the work as possible and learn new skills as I went. I'll have a whole other video about how I use Fusion for the VFX work, but the short version of the story is, it worked. Did it all in Fusion. Good for me. It's very tempting to dump cards and immediately jump into the edit, but it's very important to stay organized. We planned to shoot for two days with two cameras. Not that big of a deal, right? But I ended up filming on 17 separate days using footage from a total of five different cameras. Resolve has great tools for organizing footage. You can dig into the metadata panel and assign all sorts of properties to your clips. I use this feature to go through the clips we shot and input which scene in each take all of them were. You can go really deep on this, but basically, it's good to have a system you can rely on when you need to dig up a clip from day three of 17, for instance. While we're talking about organization, I should mention the importance of backing up your files. I bought a dedicated SSD drive for this project that I backed up to a separate drive at the end of every edit day. I also exported my DaVinci project file to back up to those two places as well as a cloud drive. And some people will hear that and think, wow, that's overkill. And some people will hear that and think that is not nearly enough. To be honest, I would probably feel a little bit more confident if I had another copy of everything. The SanDisk SSD that I bought for this project has been disconnecting itself from my computer a lot, which is definitely concerning. I saw online that other people were also having issues with recent SanDisk SSDs, so it's a good reminder to have multiple backups. While I was editing, I made a habit of copying my timeline whenever I had a new idea that I wanted to explore in the edit, so I could always go back if it didn't work out. But I'll be honest with you guys, it always worked out. Here's a quick technical tip before we get into some more philosophical territory. The built-in stabilizer in Resolve is fantastic. And if you need to stretch out a clip, Resolve's time interpolation is great too. I'd say both tools are much better than Premiere's equivalents. There were a couple of plateaus with this project. I think every director has a story of watching the first cut of a film and then considers trashing the entire thing. I definitely went through that on this. After we wrapped on production, I edited everything together. I'm watching and I'm thinking, oh God, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. This sucks. Then you keep poking at it. You start to realize that some of the things that worked in the script don't really work on screen. You begin to rewrite the story in the edit, and eventually there's a moment when you watch it through and it's finally legible. It's not great, I'm not saying I made a masterpiece or anything, but things are finally at least clicking a little bit, and you're finally hearing what you're trying to say, even if it's still muffled. At that point, the process becomes one of refinement. You figure out which sections are worded clumsily or are overwrought, and you straighten them out. You notice opportunities for pickup shots or reshoots. Little by little, you chip away at the timeline. For a personal project like this, without a deadline, this process can easily stretch out for way longer than it probably should. I tried to stay conscious of the fact that nitpicking myself would have diminishing returns. I wanted to get this thing into the world, if only just to go through the full process. I wanted to have made the thing, if that makes sense. 
Something that you should do throughout the editing process is to watch it back start to finish and pretend you're showing it to someone whose opinion you really respect. Take note of the moments when you feel yourself wanting to hit pause and explain why something is a certain way or make an excuse for why that shot could be better or whatever. Fix those moments. Even them out or lean into them. Refine so your imaginary audience is with you. This is a tricky balancing act because for a personal project like this where I'm the editor and director, I want to get attached to the edit. I want to be a little precious with things, but only enough that I'm telling the story in the way that I want to tell it, not getting up my own ass about it. This isn't to say that you can't make bold choices. Just develop strong reasons for your choices even if they're emotional ones. I've got an analogy and I don't know if this will track, but I'll give it a shot. I used to play trumpet for years in high school. At a certain point, people get proficient enough that we're spending time working on what we sound like and our tone as opposed to learning scales or reading music or other basics. I noticed a tendency in myself and other trumpet players who got to this point to over luxuriate and holding a note. We would introduce a weird form of vibrato in our throats that didn't really fit the music. It was a false, corny vibrato that you could just tell was self-indulgent. In short, we were getting up our own asses, not seeing our performance in context with the rest of the group or in context of the overall artistic impression with which an audience would be presented. It's very trumpet player behavior to see yourself as the main character of an ensemble. Sometimes the same thing happens with video editors. Sometimes we get a hold of a transition preset pack or decide a severe aspect ratio makes a video cinematic by default. These choices should be creatively justifiable. I waffled with how much film grain I should add to the edit. Am I just adding it because I think it's trendy? Am I adding it because I like the look of it? To be clear, that's a perfectly valid reason. Take a stance on your edit, but be aware that you are taking a stance. YouTube rocks. I can just say I'm making a video about editing and resolve, but I can just talk about playing trumpet. I can do anything I want. So take a stance. Back up your project in three places. Don't get in your own way. And of course, watch Bombs Away, available now. Thanks for watching. Nasty.